Hi Sixers, how are you? Today we're going to learn about the birth of civilizations and our objective is to understand why Mesopotamia has been nicknamed the Cradle of Civilization. Key terms today are going to include key, uh, city-state, natural resources, and Sumer, the first city-state, you could argue the first civilization inside of Mesopotamia, and where so many firsts happen. Um, the Sumerians are going to be big innovators. Um, if you've watched the media assignment, the brain pop on the Sumerians, you've seen that they are really great at innovation. We'll talk more about them in a little bit, but right now, let's get into it. So Mesopotamia is the cradle of civilization. Cradle. A cradle is a bed for a baby. You know, rock a bye baby in the treetop. When the wind blows, a cradle will rock. Cradle. Um, so if you're referring to something as the cradle of blank, you're saying where it was born, where it began. Like uh, the city of Philadelphia is often referred to as the cradle of American democracy. Since the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution were written there is where America was born. So Mesopotamia is the cradle of civilization. It's where the first civilization developed. And why is this? Well, Mesopotamia is like an oasis. It attracts people. Um, if we look outside of Mesopotamia into the Arabian Desert, which is a very harsh, hot desert with temperatures in 120 degrees and very little precipitation and very little water resources, and we look north of it in the Zagros Mountains, which also has a desert climate, very little precipitation, and is rocky and difficult to farm in, these harsh climates were not really great alternate locations if you're looking to start farming to look for a permanent place to live and it, when you come into the area of mesopotamia which is lush with vegetation which has tons of water resources thanks to the uh river and has um amazing silt for growing things it makes sense that people would want to go to where those resources are and stay and we see that people start settling along the tigris and euphrates banks of the river, and the population grows and grows and grows and grows because of all that is brought from the rivers with the silt uh, that make for a successful first agricultural society and then a successful civilization. I think of Mesopotamia in a lot of ways as an oasis, not the band from the 90s, but an oasis is an area where you have a natural spring where you have water and vegetation in the middle of a desert environment. Um, you know, if you're going across a desert, water, please, and you see trees growing, you can say, whoa, I have to go towards those trees because there's probably water. Trees need water. And uh, in a lot of ways, Mesopotamia is an oasis because it has all this water resources and fresh, fertile soil, despite the fact that it is in a desert climate, where you have very little precipitation, where you have very hot temperatures. Um, it still has the, the draw because of that soil and the rivers. And we're going to see that the population of these city-states like Sumer, Akkad, Ur, Babylon, and Assyria, not Syria, got to fix that, um, will continue to grow and grow and grow. The first of these, of course, is Sumer. The Sumerians, I think of as the Phineas and Ferb of Mesopotamia. Uh, they're great inventors, um, and they really like they come up with all these great new innovations and inventions uh, that really that we still use today, like the wheel, written language, uh, the brick, irrigation, just to name a couple. Um, and just like Phineas and Ferb, they're big fans of Sumer. <laughs> um, and we're gonna see as more and more people start settling in these areas, these villages that become towns, that become cities, just like we looked in our previous unit the, with the timeline of civilization, the culture gets more complex, their language gets more complex, their religious beliefs get more complex, their need for government gets much more structured. And as we see that each of these different urban areas, these cities, start acting in a lot of ways in Mesopotamia like countries do today. A country has its own military. A nation might have its own language. We see uh, nations that have um, 
some nations around the world that have a majority of religion, that have distinct uh, rituals and social structures and types of government. And each of these different cities in Mesopotamia kind of act like their own little country. Hence why they're called city-states. We'll explore them more as we explore more of Mesopotamia. In the meantime, let's take a look at a bird's eye view of what a uh, city-state in Mesopotamia might look like. Um, here you can see the river and you can see irrigate, irrigation man-made canals that bring water resources inside the city. Uh, we can see that uh, the, the main form of defense in this time period, walls around the city, multiple layers of them in order to give more and more layers of protection to the government and leadership in the area. The more powerful you are, the more powerful, closer to the center you are often in that city-state because you have these walls of defenses to protect you from other city-states that might want to occupy your land or um, barbarians, uh, nomadic tribes that haven't settled in, uh, that haven't uh, gone into civilization and see these places as sitting easy targets to raid and try to get resources. Um, we see the farmland all around it. Here's a kind of a sideways view. Again, we see a lot of farmland and the walls around it. And what I like about this picture is that you see the ziggurat in the middle of the city-state. And each city-state in Mesopotamia is centered around a ziggurat. Ziggurats are the first multi-structural building. Um, they uh, are living buildings, meaning that they were used and operated as the center of government and religion in Mesopotamian city-states. Um, the ziggurats uh, were really uh, a major earmark of Mesopotamian culture. Um, we'll learn more about them as we look at innovations in our next unit. Between two rivers, in fact, Mesopotamia actually means land between the rivers. One river is the Tigris, and the other is the Euphrates. My grandfather says it's easy to grow food in our valley because the soil here is so fertile. And he says that is because of the mountains up north. It snows a lot up there in the winter. When the snow melts, all that water runs down into the valley and into the rivers. Then the rivers rise over their banks and flood the valley. And they dump a lot of really good dirt on the land. It's great for growing food in. So now we eat really well. We grow barley and wheat, lots of beans and fresh vegetables, and fruits like melons, dates, apples, figs, and grapes. Our animals give us milk, cheese, and meat, and there are always plenty of fish in the rivers. So much to draw people towards this area. No wonder why the population has got so big. So what factors led Mesopotamia to become the quote, 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 cradle of civilizations? What factors led civilization, the first civilizations to be born? Yah. Thanks so much for watching. We're going to wrap up the Mesopotamian geography unit next. And uh, I appreciate you watching and look forward to reading your answers to the exit card. Thank you.